Hey guys, it's Lewis here from NDXacting.com and in today's video we're going to discuss the O2 ring oxygen monitor. This is actually a, a slick little device so you can put it right in your index finger and what it does is it tracks down and it records your blood oxygen levels, your heart rate, and when you're sleeping it records your body movement. It's really really important that we know this information when we sleep. The most important thing in life is sleeping and breathing. Now you could best diets and, and the best doctors and the best exercises, you could do whatever it is that you can. But if you can't sleep properly, if you can't breathe effectively, then eventually you're going to get sick. And that's why it's important that we have the, the right type of technologies and not with wearables just exploding into the medical field. We could use a lot of these things to kind of benefit ourselves. And we can give doctors, clinicians, let's just say our sleep specialists and our cardiologists key information about what's going on in our sleep. So what this thing does, it, uh, it measures your, your heart rate and your blood oxygen levels. Right now, my heart rate, it's about 75% and my blood oxygen levels is 98% which is very good. Now this device is key because it uses the same transmissive oximetry technology trusted by hospitals and clinicians. It's also FDA registered so you can use this and, and once you record all the proper data you can actually download it into a PDF file and you can send it to your cardiologist, you can send it to your sleep specialist and it's something that they will be able to uh, go by in order to make an effective clinical diagnosis. Now for those who have been uh, recommended a sleep study this is actually key because you can have a, a home sleep study now. Now what does this do? Now when we sleep at night right it's important that we maintain a good heart rate that we maintain good oxygen levels while we sleep and also uh, control our, our movement because sometimes that can affect. Now, if you're the type of person that snores, what is that going to do? When you snore, you're compromising your airways and that's why you snore. Why? Because you're not getting the type, you're not getting the right type of air going into your lungs, going into your system, going to, into your respiratory airways, and that's why you make that trickling sound. So it's important that when we sleep, we do not snore. But we have, if we have the tendency, let's just say, of sleeping on our backs with our mouth open, mouth breathing, then we're going to be most likely to snore. It's important that we sleep on the side and breathe through our nose. It's also important to understand that mouth breathing is extremely dangerous. Why? Because it's, it narrows our upper respiratory airways. And we're not getting the right type of oxygen going into our cardiovascular system, into our tissues, into our peripheral nervous system, which is composed of nerves and muscles, into our autonomic nervous system and the central nervous system too, which is our brain. So what happens when we have low oxygen levels? Then we automatically wake up. In fact, I was just reading an article the other day, right? To my surprise, just when I had gotten this, this product, this product was sent to me by WellU in order for me to make a, a, a review on it. And I think it's, it's, it's amazing. I wish I would have had this a long time ago. But anyway, the article that I was reading was a young lady. Uh, she was taking a shower and all of, all of a sudden she fainted. And if it wasn't for her boyfriend that was there and brought her back, him and his friend brought, brought her back, I guess, me, you know, they did the right medical techniques to bring her back, but she fainted. Why did she faint? Because oxygen levels dropped. Dropped to the point where the brain didn't get enough, enough oxygen and she fainted. But thankfully she was brought back. So knowing our oxygen levels, knowing, knowing our heart rate, it's really, really key because it can give, it can give us clinical uh, data about what's going on with our bodies. And so many times you hear when people are sick, they end up in a hospital, they end up in ventilators, in ventilators, using ventilators. Why? Because their oxygen levels drop. Obviously, if you're a person that snores, if you have sleep apnea, if you have asthma, if you have, let's just say, respiratory uh, issues, if you have hypoxia, hypoxia means when your uh, tissues uh, are not getting the right type of oxygen. At the end of the video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you guys a hack so you guys can sleep accordingly and you can have the best levels of oxygen while you sleep and a good heart rate while you sleep 
and control your body movements while you sleep. Because a lot of people sometimes ask me, if you can't breathe through your mouth while you sleep, right? If, I'm, if, if, if it's suggestive that we breathe through our nose, remember, we cannot breathe through our mouth. If we breathe through our mouth, we're going to get sick. We need to, we need to breathe through our nose. Okay, so in fact, when we breathe through our nose, it filters the air that we breathe, it filters the oxygen that we breathe, it protects us against pathogens and allergens that can give us a serious disease. And if we breathe through our mouth, it doesn't filter anything. So we need to breathe through our nose. The breathing through our nose is the first line of defense when it comes to protecting our bodies against disease. Breathing through our mouth is gonna get us sick. So when we sleep, we need to breathe through our nose, not through our mouths. And I'm gonna tell you guys exactly what to do to be able to only breathe through your nose while you sleep. And, if you, and when you have this technology, you can put it to the test. It will be able to give you proper data as far as what's going on exactly uh, when you sleep. And if your oxygen levels are dropping, if your heart rate is increasing, and if you're getting a good night's nice sleep or not. So let's go into the app and I'll show you guys around. Okay guys, so let's go into the app here. So if you have an iPhone or an Android, all you gotta do is go to uh, VI Health. I already have the app downloaded, so I'm going to uh, just press open here. Okay, it's gonna sink in. I already have it synced in into my oxygen monitor. Okay, it picks it up automatically. If not, then all you gotta do is the, press the, uh, the button. Okay, so let's go into here. It says here we have history, we have dashboard, settings, and discovery. Let's, let's, go, into, let's go into dashboard first. Let's, let's see my oxygen level. So my oxygen level is here, 97% right on top, SpO2. And then my heart rate, it's at uh, 82. Now it's at 75, it's, it's dropping a little bit, so it's pretty good, so I, there's no uh, complaints there. Obviously, you see here 70 to 100, 70 to 100 when it comes to the uh, oxygen levels. If, you're low, if, you, if it falls below 70, then that's not, that's not a good thing. And uh, you, can set, uh, you can set it where it tells you when you sleep, and if it goes, if it falls at a certain level, you, you can set it where it kind of, uh, it vibrates and all that you know so we're going to look into that and then your heart rate is here um, that looks pretty good so let's that's you that's your dashboard okay so let's go into your history let's go into the history here so let's let's check this out a little bit and let's go into uh, let's go into this one here and all right so then the top here is my oxygen level so the oxygen levels is pretty good there's no uh, complaints there it's, it's it's an average of 98 percent uh, which is okay, and then the average, uh, I said the oxygen level is 98%, and then the, the heart rate here, you can see 75, average is, uh, seven, my average is 75, and if you can look at the graph here, it says pulse rate, then it's below 90, so it's uh, pretty good. So then again, so when you use this at night, it's going to record the data. If you have low oxygen levels, let's just say uh, below, uh, almost touching 80, you can set it where it tells you we're gonna look into that. And that's what you don't want. You wanna maintain good oxygen levels while you sleep, and you wanna maintain a good heart rate while you sleep. Because if the oxygen levels drop, and then your heart rate increases, then there's, there's a problem. And I already spoke about that, snoring, sleep apnea, you gotta be able to, you gotta be able to control that, but at least this is going to give you good clinical information as far as what's going on. So let's see if we could go to the settings here. So as far as the settings, right, when it vibrates, when something is off and it vibrates, you can set it here. It's already came, it came at medium. You can set it strong, you can set it very strong. But anyway, but you could set it here where it lets you know if things are dropping. If not, then you know the next day you'll be able to see a quick a, uh, a report. So now, let's go here to the oxygen level. So the oxygen level shear threshold, it's at 88%. So then that means that when it drops below 88%, then it lets you know. That's why I have it. I mean, there's no reason why my oxygen level should drop uh, below 88%. I want to know if they are, and so far, you know, so good. But who knows, maybe if I sleep on my back, uh, I mean, if I snore, if I open my mouth, my oxygen levels will drop and I uh, don't want that to happen. So I definitely have that set there. So let's go to my, let's go to the, uh, hold on a second, my pulse rate. Okay, my pulse rate here. 
it's set low it's set at 50 and then the high is set at 120 so at 120 it's going to vibrate and uh, i'm going to actually change that to 100 okay because i don't want my my uh, pulse to be over 100 actually you know what let's just change it to 105 105 is good i think 105 it might it might uh it might happen and it might uh, not, but I don't want my pulse rate running. But then again, sometimes, listen, you can have a nightmare. You can have, a, I mean, an active dream, uh, you know, who knows? And then your, your pulse might go up. But if it's going up a couple of times, then you don't want that to, you don't want that to happen. But anyway, guys, I think that the, it, it's, self, it's self-explanatory. Uh, you can go to the website. Uh, you can visit here and get... Uh, well you.com and i think these the company it's an amazing company they have a lot of great products and i think this is a really really good product when it comes to people that have uh, sleeping disorders but even if you don't have sleeping disorders you definitely want to know key information about your body when it comes to your health when it comes to your oxygen levels and when it comes to your pulse your pulse rate okay it's a good website you can just check it out it's a, there's a lot of key information there. Oh, one more thing. I almost forgot that the uh, O2 ring uh, oxygen monitor, it comes in a nice little box, okay? And you can charge the device via uh, USB. Now, when it came, it was already, I don't know, maybe about 80% charged. I mean, I used it a couple of times, and I think charged it today for the very first time. It took like maybe, I don't know, it took me about an hour, less than an hour to uh, charge it, almost close to 100%. But the battery life in this thing is... It's pretty good. It's uh, it, it, it's not that bad. So I definitely uh, recommend the product. All right, guys, back again. So if you have sleep apnea, and if you snore, you want to be able to control these things because you cannot snore, and you can't you can't have an apnea when you sleep because that means your your oxygen levels are going to drop, your heart rate is going to increase, and you're going to wake up. So how can you control only breathing through your nose and not through your mouth? How can you get the right type of oxygen so you, you can sleep? You want to be able to get REM sleep. REM sleep is deep dreaming. You want to be able to sleep accordingly so you don't wake up. And there was a times when I was having problems sleeping. I was catching insomnia. I was waking up every hour. It was just like the worst feeling in the world. I mean, I just had a subscriber just tell me that she had problems sleeping and she sleeps about three to four hours uh, a, a night, and it's not good. But, but sometimes, you know, you can have a lot of different reasons why you don't sleep. It's not always sleep apnea. It's not, it's not always mouth breathing. It's not always snoring. But let's discuss how can you prevent it. Because if I don't use the right type of measures, I'm going to snore. And I'm going to open my mouth. Why? Because I have some low levels of sleep apnea. And, and in a future video, I'm going to show you guys how to, if you have sleep apnea and if you snore, how to correct these things permanently. Just basically be 100% natural, even sleeping on your back. You won't, you won't open your mouth. But anyway, very important to know that 80% of people in this world have a deviated septum. So sometimes it can compromise the, the quality of air, the type of air, the amount of air that comes through our nose. So one of the things that I do is I use this nose clip. You see that? I put this right in my nose, okay, at night. And that's going to guarantee that I get the most air going into my nose because I, I only breathe through my nose. I cannot breathe through my mouth. When I was breathing through my mouth a long time ago and I did not know I was getting sick. And one time I woke up in panic mode. I remember I woke up, I was on my back and I just suddenly woke up, heart rate to the roof, blood pressure to the roof. And if I would have measured my oxygen levels at that particular moment, what I caught a vicious panic attack would have been, I didn't have this baby here, but now I do. Okay, so hack number two. If, I don't know if you guys see in my video, but if, if not, I, was, I did a product, product review on Sotme Fix. Sotme Fix is those people that suffer from snoring, sleep apnea, and if you wanna get if you want to guarantee yourself a good night's sleep, you have to know about taping your mouth. Now, Sotme Fix is a nice little strip, okay? You open it, and you put it right across your mouth. It has a little opening so you can breathe. So if you open your mouth a little bit, you'll be able to breathe. You're not going to choke. Nothing's going to happen. I've used this 
number, numerous times. But it, it is about 21 to $25, give or take. They only give you 28 strips, so you can go through these rather quickly, in about a month and a half. So then what I do is I also use, on the side, I use this tape here. So then what I do is this. Take a little bit of piece of tape. Now, it doesn't have an opening, so I don't put it across. I just put it vertical, okay? When I sleep at night, and it's gonna help me keep my mouth closed, but I can talk, I can breathe, no problem. I sleep normal. But one of the things that I do is, one of the things you have to do is you can't sleep on your back. You can't sleep on your back. You gotta sleep on the side, two pillows, a little elevated, I get a good night's sleep. I don't wake up. But now with this, I'll be able to monitor my sleep and I'm able to see if, uh, if I have to make any necessary adjustments, but I already, I have uh, already, if I sleep on the side, never sleep on my back. If I do sleep on my back, then I'm going to snore. Sometimes I'm in the living room and I sleep on my back and boom, I start snoring and I, could, I wake up right away. But anyway, guys, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do remember this channel is about providing medical care solutions and diagnostic digital information so you and your family members could be healthy. We're going to do a lot of product reviews and, and there's a lot of things that we're going to bring into this new uh, growing channel so we could benefit ourselves and healthcare is changing rapidly. Now, if you don't know, I'm not a physician, but I am a registered uh, nerve conduction study technologist. I'm in the field of of electrodiagnostic medicine. I do nerve examinations and all types of neurological studies. I've been doing so. I think next year I'll be doing, I've been seeing patients for 30 years. That's, that's a long time. I, mean, I should be president by now, but I'm still a lowly technician seeing patients. The purpose of this channel is to be able to give back to as many people as possible and uh, help as many people as possible uh, get healthy and, and if I'm able to help myself then I'm able to help you anyway guys with that being said I'll see you in the next video bye bye